Hello and welcome. Today we are learning about higher order functions in JavaScript. Let's get started. Today we are looking at higher order functions. Hopefully at this point you know what a regular function is. We've worked with functions in this JavaScript playlist. Higher order functions or a higher order function is a function that does at least one of the following. It takes one or more functions as an argument, which is synonymous with parameter, or it returns a function as its result. And it looks like there is a typo here as its result. So it returns a function as the result. Let me put that as the result. Or it takes one or more functions as an argument. It doesn't have to do both. So we're going to look at several functions today in JavaScript that are higher order functions. And let's start with the easiest one first and probably the one that I use the most often. And this is called for each. So I will mark that. And I guess before we get started, I should show what data we're going to work with. And we're going to import some JSON data and I've got a post.js file. And you can see I have grabbed this data from the JSON placeholder website and slash posts. That's a practice API. And it has 100 posts here. You can see the first 10 posts are with the user ID 1. And then it moves on to user ID 2. And that user has 10 posts and so on. So we go through 10 user IDs. Each one of those users has 10 posts of their own. So we have a total of 100 posts. And you can see it starts out as an array. Oftentimes when we receive JSON, it does. So we've got this array started and then inside the array, each one of these posts is an object. And that is what we're going to use as data for these examples. So we need to import that first. So we'll start with, and I should do that maybe even before we start with the for each marker. Let me go ahead and import this. And we're going to import posts from posts.js. There we go. I'll save that and let's look at an example of for each with our posts. And posts is an array and we can call for each on an array. And now for each post, this is easy when we start out with a name that's plural and then we move to a single. So in posts, we have post and we can loop through those. This essentially replaces a for loop. And let me just log to the console each post. And you can see in the console, now we have posts from user 9, 10, all the way back up to 1. And we can see each one of their posts. Now, this works just like a for loop, but see how much easier. We just said for each post and log the post to the console. And we didn't need to define the iterator as we start with a for loop, or we didn't need to increment that iterator. And I often do this with HTML collections when I'm selecting elements from the DOM or node lists when I'm selecting nodes from the DOM with the query selector. And then also just in an array, if I don't need that iterator, if I don't need to uh, say define a number and refer to that each time the loop iterates, I can just use for each on an array and then we can carry out whatever we want to with this anonymous function inside the for each loop. Okay, let me clear the console and then we will move on to the next higher order function. And that next higher order function is filter. Now I want to start out by defining an array because this is going to return an array. So I'm going to call this filtered posts. And I'm going to set that equal to posts.filter. And now, once again, I refer to the single post within the original array. And we're going to filter these posts. So this is going to return an array. And each time it loops through the array, it's going to return a value. So I only want to return the posts where the post user ID, as we can see, we have user IDs in each one of the objects here, where the post user ID is equal to one. And I can save that, but we're not logging it to the console yet. So 
I'll just need to come over here and say console.log filtered, filtered posts. There we go. And now when I log this to the console, you can see we get 10 results back. And I'll go ahead and click over here so I can open the, this up and expand it. And you can see our user ID is one in each one of these objects returned. And we have an array with 10 elements. And we can change that in our JavaScript. We could say we just want the user ID of five with this filter call. And now, as I open this up, you can see the user ID is five in each one of these. So this is a way to filter results or filter data that we get. And this higher order function is very useful. That is way better than writing all the code that it would require manually to filter without this option being available. Okay, we can move on from filtered posts and we'll apply the next higher order function, which is map. So I'll once again start out with a array because this is going to return an array and I'll say mapped posts. And I'm going to set that equal to filtered posts dot map. Once again, refer to each post inside the function. And then when we map these posts, we're going to take, say, each value of the ID. Let's take it times 10. And this will turn, return an array with the post ID. So we've got 41, 42, 43. If we take it times 10, we should get 410, 420, 430. And we should return an array with just those values. So I'll log this to the console. And we can see if I'm right. Yes, we've got an array here, our mapped posts array that has 410, 420, 430. And we could once again change the ID that is filtering the array that we're using. And now, of course, we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And of course, we could do that again and get different results. So you see how that works. We are first filtering all of the 100 posts down to, at this point, just the user ID of three. And then we're taking those results those 10 posts and we're mapping that. So then we're just taking the post ID and taking it times 10 and saving those values into our mapped posts array. So at this point we have an array that has 10 separate values here. Let me change this back to 10. Good, nice bigger numbers to work with here. So 90, 91 through 100 would have been the original post IDs and we took it times 10. So we've got 910 through 1000. Now let's look at our final higher order function. And this is called reduce. So I'm going to once again define an array. I'll call this reduced posts. And I'll start with the mapped posts and then reduce. Now reduce is different. We're not just going to refer to the individual value post. We're also going to use what's called an accumulator. I'll call this sum, where we're going to total the values that we have. So we have 910 through 1000, and I'm going to return the sum plus the post value. And then we'll have an array Actually, we won't have an array. We'll just have a value because this accumulates when we reduce and we will log that value. So I'll put reduced, probably be more accurate if I put reduced posts value. Let me change that here too, just because I like to have descriptive names. And now you can see that total value is 9,550. So we've reduced the values within the mapped posts array. And of course, each one of these will change if we come back and just change the user ID we're working with. So let's see if we started with user ID five, the total value would be 4,550. If the user ID was one, the total value would be 550. And that is the total of all of these numbers from our mapped array totaled and then given here with the reduce 
higher order function. So we've used each one of these higher order functions as we've worked through this. The only one we really didn't apply that I did demonstrate is for each, but I do probably use for each more often than any of the others instead of using a for loop because it is so easy to just use for each on an array or an HTML collection or a node list and do something to each item within that array. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.